I am the executive director of Transit Forward. We're an Austin-based 501c3 with a mission to engage and educate our friends and neighbors about transit with a real focus on Project Connect. Exactly. That was actually my first question was to remind us of Transit Forward, so that's perfect. Um, but you all are partnered with ATP and Cap Metro. You know, tell us about Project Connect. Let's start general about the terms of cost. I know we've got about five plans circulating right now, so tell us yeah. where we're at right now. So tomorrow is the last day for citizens to both ask questions and submit feedback on the first phase of light rail. Uh, the Austin Transit Partnership started this process on March 21st. They had over 500 people come to an open house right downtown. And since then, to their credit, they have crisscrossed this city. I mean, meeting with unions, neighborhood groups, disability rights groups at lunch counters, at bus stops, everywhere getting thousands of people to give their input. And they have an online open house. So if anybody watching this feels really, really strongly about how this first phase of light rail should look, which is a critical part of Project Connect and also how we grow as a community. They really, really need to go to that online open house and submit their feedback for the Austin Transit Partnership. So they can take all of that information that they're getting from Austinites across the city and come up with a proposal to their board, Cat Metro, and the city council. Is the cost at 11 point, do you, do you remember that off the top of your head? So the, I, I, this cost situation, yeah. this isn't what we're talking about yeah, here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about the cost. So right. ATP has a budget. Yeah. No one is asking for a tax increase. Right. I mean, no one is asking for a tax that. increase. Explain that, yeah. that's what people are latching on to. Sure, this. I yeah. mean, you've seen across the country over the last two or three years, mm -hmm. prices have gone up. I mean, look at the price of eggs, yeah. <laughs> right? Everyone knows that these things have happened. And so what the ATP has done is said, look, um, we're not going to be able to do everything in the first phase of Project Connect. So what we're going to do is get as much input as we can on what that first phase looks like, living within their means, within the budget that is set, without asking for a tax increase, and build the best possible first phase so that people can get around easier and it can be expanded to really make sure that that promise to Austinites is kept. And that's what they're looking at right now. And that leads me to, it is just a phase, you know? So there's, there's room for expansion Absolutely. and things like that. Yep. But of course, the five that are circulating are, um, you know, people are also latching onto that there's some shorter routes, things of that nature. But I do want to know, since it is just phase one and it is a good start, name some of those uh, like positive expansions and additions that are going to sure. add, like airport, things like that. Sure. So the basic part of any big transit system is you have a bunch of different parts, right? You have light rail, which is what we're talking about now, which can get people from high density housing areas. So the two biggest ones in the city are the drag and the area around Pleasant Valley and Riverside. How do you get those folks that live in those places to the places that they work, which is a lot of times right around here in downtown, right? You've got UT, uh, the city offices are down here, all the state offices up by the Capitol, that sort of thing. And so light rail can get a lot of people quickly from places where they live to where they are working, right? And then you have the other things off of that. You have the commuter rail, like the red line that we've got now, that can get folks from farther away, stops a lot less, but can bring folks into town, right? Or get them out to places like Q2 Stadium. I take the red line to Q2 for every single home game for Austin SC, right? And then you have the bus systems that interact with those rail lines. All of this is part of Project Connect. And so the great thing about this first phase of light rail is it puts in this foundational phase, which will allow people to get around and connect with systems that are already there to make sure Project Connect happens like we promised the voters back in 2020. Well, let's talk about to ATP's credit, like you just mentioned, yeah. about they're really making sure they hear feedback. So how important, <laughs> it may seem like a basic question, but how important is hearing feedback from the community? Because at the end of the day, you're also a community member, and I see you use this a lot. Like, how important is that to hear from people here in Austin and around Austin? Yeah. We live in a democracy and people's input and feedback matters. A world-class city like Austin deserves a world-class transit system and we can only get that if folks tell the people that are making decisions, in this case the transit partnership, what they want. And so they have been absolutely full of energy, full of openness, full of a real ability to listen to folks. And we encourage people, please, if you have strong feelings about this plan and what it could be moving forward, go to that open house online, take a look at the different options and the information being presented and make your voice heard. And only with all of that feedback will they then be able to get a really, really good foundational first phase plan proposed. And that brings me to, you've got House Bill 3899. Yeah. You've also got Mayor Watson that is saying he's really working hard with legislators to fix the language in that, but that he also agrees that it should go back to voters. Some wow. of the things outlined in that bill was what the debt would be used for, how much debt product leaders need to issue, and then the tax rate needed to pay back the debt. So 
I know he mentions, I think he was saying if we hold that election before, it wouldn't really, the bill wouldn't really necessarily affect that. But in general, taking it back to voters, how do you feel about that? Would that be a big setback in terms of timeline? You know, what would that look like? It is intensely frustrating that people at the state level, at the legislature and other offices, as well as, frankly, some national groups that just hate rail, are trying to tell Austin what to do when we've already made our decision. We voted almost 60-40 for Project Connect back in 2020. This is not a close vote. We have made our intentions clear. We wanna keep moving forward. And it is very, very frustrating when these outside groups and these people with different ideologies who disagree with that are trying to have a second bite at the apple. So we find this whole process, uh, again, really frustrating. And unfortunately, if it comes down to a vote, we'll just have to fight these outside groups and fight these people that don't want Austin to decide for themselves what to do. We're just gonna have to decide it again. And I know that we at Transit Forward, we believe in protecting as much as we can this generational investment that Project Connect will provide in a world-class transit system. Well, and that's, so my last question really is, let's say that there should be a setback or something like that. Do you want to remind people of maybe the importance that you guys outlined, yes. it cuts down on traffic, it helps affordable transit. You yep. know, what are some of those things that people need to realize the bigger picture? Affordability. When people can give up a car, if a family can give up a car, they can save $10,000 a year. If you can have a place to live next to a transit stop that lets you get around, it is the most concrete affordability policy we can do in the city with the biggest issue that's affecting people right now. It will cut down on traffic. I don't know if you saw the picture we did a couple months ago where it showed the 50 people. You should show that on this. Traffic will get cut down when more people can take transit. Climate change. If the city truly wants to hit its greenhouse gas reduction goals, then we've got to have more transit with more density next to those transit stops. That is the only way for the city to hit these goals. When you look at public safety, when you look accessibility for the disability population, all these things are what make transit so vital for a city that's growing like we are. And that's why we have to protect Project Connect and we've got to keep fighting for it against some of these special interest groups and out of city people that want to tell us what to do.